In France, the term for mass immigration and the declining white population is called the Great Replacement, which in one short phrase sums it all up. We are being replaced. It is a massive historical event we are living through, and we are told that it is nothing to worry about and that we shouldn't even notice it. But we do notice it, and here I would like to look at the inside and outside pressures upon us. Why is the white population declining? Currently, the white population is increasing, but that will end soon. Within the next 50 years, there will be a large collapse of the white population worldwide. Worldwide, there has been a failure to replace population, for white people to have more white people. Many have wondered why this should be, but to my mind, it's obvious. The governments of all Western countries have pursued policies that either directly or indirectly led this way. Abortion is not a policy designed to increase population. In fact, it is a way of suppressing the native-born population. The government legalised it, but it makes out it is powerless to do anything about it. The people demand it, and they must give the people what they want. Marriage is in decline. It is amazing to think only 55 years ago, nowhere on the planet did no-fault divorce exist. Yet it is portrayed as the natural order. It would be barbaric for it not to exist, just like that most barbaric of dec decades, the 1950s. Marriage encouraged the sexes to be on the same side, but that is discouraged. No men and women are rivals. Everyone knows that. Marriage is too serious for young people, so don't get married when you're young. And why bother when you're older? You don't need a piece of paper to prove you love someone. And when you find marriage boring or challenging or unsatisfying for any reason you feel like, just get divorced. Teach your children that even one of their parents is disposable, that no one is safe, that everything in life is about short-term thinking and how you feel right here and now. None of this encourages children. And of course, the government who legalized all of this says it's powerless to do anything about it. The destruction of the family goes hand in hand with the destruction of marriage, but it goes further. Single parenthood is funded by the taxpayer and encourages men and women to be promiscuous. It actively discourages marriage, which unites men and women in a common cause. Family is now supposed to be artificial, not natural. Women with multiple children to multiple fathers, such women have always existed, but never, never has it been funded by the taxpayer and never has it been portrayed as good, even admirable. The destruction of the working class is an ongoing issue. The moving of factories to the third world, the destruction of working class jobs, these have all been a direct attack upon the family. A working class man cannot support a family without a job, without a permanent job, a job that is now often out of reach, and all hidden by the rise of the paper economy, created not by wealth, but by paper money, created by confidence, but all at the expense of the working class family. Women working outside the home is a long-term issue. Women have always worked, but outside of the home and away from her family is really only within the last century. Now women's work and her family are divorced from each other. For single women, working can become a trap. Most want to meet a man and marry, but to qualify, a man must make at least as much money as she does. At least. But now that is harder than ever, as men and women are paid the same for the same job. At each stage, men and women are encouraged to compete instead of uniting. Even when people marry, they can fall for the negative portrayals of parenthood. Children drive a woman crazy. They take up her time and stop her from really realizing her dreams. They are a total nuisance, not really worth the bother. Fathers are incompetent, forever washing the baby with the dishes or doing something equally silly. But fathers are also men, and that means they're also violent and probably sexual predators. Every generation in the past thought parenthood was one of the greatest achievements that a man or woman could have. Of course, all those previous generations probably lived in the 1950s. Barbarians. Because one thing that previous generations never had to deal with was the fact that we are now eternally young. We are the first generation that will live forever. Maybe. Nothing certain. But it's possible. Even if we do die, we can still die at 95 in a snowboarding accident, reliving the youth we never quite left. Remember, every time you see a parachuting grandmother on the news, 
It's not a celebration of her achieving old age. It's a celebration that she's so young. It's a celebration of youth culture. Never dress your age. You're so young, no matter how long ago you were born. Which leads into the final failure. Nothing is about the future. Apart from their economy, there is next to no planning or thinking about the future. Previous generations put in place a continuing or rolling future. Family begets family. Everything was based upon the family as the building block of society, and it was the family that would continue into the future forever. But they also lived in a world where they believed that the future would be more or less like the past. But now most people do not believe that at all. They believe that the future will be unlike the past, that the future is so chaotic that no one can plan for it. A society such as this doesn't need children as children are for the future, and our society believes that there is no future. But while all this is going on, our governments have been importing people. Mass immigration is one of the greatest historical changes in world history. Why have they engaged in such a thing? They want to prove one of the basic themes of liberalism correct. They believe in the equality of all peoples, that everyone is the same. Men and women are the same. Races are all the same in all abilities, as are all ethnic groups and all religions. The only race is the human race, and all differences are due to culture, and that once there is a unified culture, then all those petty differences will vanish as if they never existed, because, of course, they don't exist. So moving large numbers of people of different races, ethnicities, and religions together is not going to fail as it has everywhere throughout time. No, they will succeed because they will succumb to liberalism and become good liberals. They also feel that as the West is rich, it should help to destroy poverty. It can do that by sending money overseas, and it can do it by bringing in poor people and letting them share in our wealth. It doesn't matter if the immigrants are rich or poor, we can look after them. The liberal can show how compassionate they are by spending your money. It's a win-win for them. Remember, the West is rich. You can afford this. You can afford it. Finally, we come to the greatest of all liberal beliefs, levelling, that in the end, all people will cease to have differences because differences create conflict, but that can all be done away with by levelling. No rich or poor, no smart or dumb. No, once everyone is levelled, then there will be no need for conflict. We will all live in peace and harmony. It's utter rubbish, but it is at the heart of liberalism. The Great Replacement shows no sign of ending or even of slowing down, although resistance is growing. Traditionalists must fight both the cultural decay as well as mass immigration. It is not benign. It is designed to destroy us for the greater good of liberalism. The Great Replacement is white genocide carried out by our own government against our interests and against our will.